morning. So, I was talking about optical non-linearity. Non Let me now start it all over again little bit. Optical non-linearity. Optical nonlinearity is a field which is of tremendous technological uh, technological importance. So, engineering as well as physics as well as chemist, they all you they all it will be useful for them the optical nonlinearity and the subject called photonics. Photonics uses optical nonlinearity. So, before we do that, I will first tell some rudimentary ideas what is optical nonlinearity, and then we chemists, we cannot, this is such a vast area, I cannot uh, uh, describe you. Also, my knowledge is not uh, that great in those areas. Okay? So, those are domains of electrical engineers and physicists, instrumentalists like that. And, but they cannot do anything unless we make compounds. So, we are the main people to make optically nonlinear active compounds. So, before I do optical nonlinear active compounds, okay, I will tell you what is optical nonlinearity in a very nutshell. Okay. So, now some materials, some compounds some compounds, if I hit it with a photon, then the polarizability is proportional to E. So, photon comes from electromagnetic radiation, it has electrical and magnetic component. So, this electrical component E will induce a polariz uh, polarization in your compound. What is polarization? I will very simple example I will tell, uh, tell you that if you take a iron ball, iron ball and a rubber ball, what happens? Iron ball I cannot deform, but a rubber ball I can squeeze it and deform it. From a sphere it can become a deformed structure and all that. So, I will say rubber ball is more polarizable Okay, compared to an iron ball. So, that is polarizability. Polarizability means in an uh, in chemical sense that in a chemical compound, if the electron density okay, from its equilibrium that compound we have thermodynamic equilibrium. Now, if I heat it with an electromagnetic radiation, then what will happen? it will become polarizable, but not with this ordinary light. I have to use laser light. Okay. So, some compound, some chemical compounds where polarizability is polarizability linearly varies with the electrical component. So, I say P is proportional to E or I can say P equals alpha E. In language, I will say that polarizability for most molecules are linearly varies as the electric uh, vector. Okay. P is proportional to E, that is what it means. Okay. And this is the co uh, coefficient. Okay. So, now, if I sum uh, some materials whose electron density can be deformed, number one. And in those molecules, I will uh, come in a minute, what molecules, what should be their structures? Those are our concern, right? Chemist, we have to build. So, now those molecules, suppose we know how to build. So, if on those molecules, I heat it with laser light, then the polarization is no longer linear. But polarization 
all say molecular polarizability, okay. molecular polarizability non-linearly varies. What does that mean? Man, that means alpha, alpha e plus beta e square plus gamma e cube plus dot dot dot. It goes on. That means, here polarizability non-linearly varies with E, E is the electric vector. Okay. This is first hyperpolarizability beta, first hyperpolarizability and gamma is second hyperpolarizability and so on. Or we can say that beta is the second order non-linear optical, uh, second linear effect, second order optical non-linearity, gamma is third order optical non-linearity effect. Okay. So, we can say that and P is molecular polarizability, we are discussing molecule. Okay. All right. So, now here I first talk about second order optical non-linearity. Now, I am talking about second order optical non-linearity. Second order optical non-linearity. So, beta is the, what is beta? Beta is the quadratic or first hyperpolarizability beta, I told you that and this is come the second order nonlinear optical, optical activity comes from this beta e square. Okay. Now, the question is which molecules are expected to give high beta values? that is my aim. As a chemist, there are we know that these things are very important in photonics and there are so many things can be done. Now, what is, uh, but I have to know little bit of those things, unless then only I can design my compound. Okay. So, what happens? The compounds that are expected to give high beta values, beta values is molecular first molecular hyperpolarizability. This is linear hyperpolarizability, okay. uh, this is first nonlinear hyperpolarizability, second nonlinear hyperpolarizability. Okay. So, in the second order optical nonlinearity, the molecule should be like this. There should be a donor, let me write as D and then acceptor. Acceptor molecule and donor molecule. What, uh, what donor acceptor? Electron donor, electron acceptor. And now there will be a pi bridge. I write like this, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So this is pi bridge when molecule one side is donor, one side is acceptor and this is pi bridge. This kind of molecules, this kind of molecules are expected to give high beta values. Okay. Molecules, I am talking about molecules. So, therefore, when I look at, when I am trying to synthesize, I am a chemist. So, I come to, I decided to work on optical nonlinearity. So, I have to synthesize some new molecules which will give high beta values. Okay. So, uh, so, what I will do? I will look at these things and I look at what, which molecules are expected to give high beta values. These are the, if you look at carefully, all molecules, then these are the important points to be made, to be understood and to be memorized. 
for make for getting molecules with high beta values. What is that? Excited state. I am writing these things. Excited states. electronically excited states, close in energy, close in energy to the ground state. To the ground state. that is one property. Number two, why it is so? Because if the excited state and ground state are closer in energy, then this energy should come in the infrared or visible light. That means, I can take infrared laser or visible laser, which are easily available to make my, to get electrons excited. Okay, or deformed. Okay. So, that is why we need close in energy. Number 2 is large oscillator strength. Large oscillator strength for the transition. That means, large oscillator strength for the transition means, if I hit the compound with a laser, then it will absorb very easily large amount of energy and go to the excited state. If it has a low or small oscillator strength, its absorption will not be many. Suppose uh, I will tell a number, maybe 10 of 10 molecules will go up for a low oscillator strength mo uh, molecule okay, for the transition. Now, if the transition is large, then what will happen? Maybe thousands of molecules will go up. Do not uh, uh, do not count my word of 10 and 1000, I just meaning it that it large oscillator strength more and more molecule will go to the excited state or to the excited state means when, she, when it goes to the excited state, it will be more deformed, it will be more deformed that is it is liable to be deformed more. Okay. So, polarizability will be more. And number three, number three is very important. A large difference, a large difference between between the ground state. between the ground and the excited state dipole moments what is the meaning of this excited state dipole moment, if it is large, that means charge separation is large, okay. then what will happen? If charge separation is large, so there is a charge positive and negative charge. So, electrical component of the electromagnetic radiation will interact much stronger, because my uh, uh, dipole moments are larger. If the dipole moment is low, that means, electrical component will not be able to interact very strongly. Okay. Charge interacts with charge, electrical component will uh, interact with electrical. So, electrical means charge, charge separated charge. 
So, that is why if the dipole moment in the ground and the excited state are different, then it will interact very strongly. So, that is the that is the criteria, these three are very important point to understand before you embark on a on synthesizing this molecule. Before I do, there is another important thing. These I am talking about molecular, okay, at the molecular level, but when I am trying to go to say some uh, uses, okay, some practical uses. I can, I may not, I cannot work with one single molecule sometimes, but I will work with say powder, little bit powder or some solid. Okay. In that case, of course, you will know that optical activity works both in the solid state, in the liquid state as well as in the gaseous state. This is important okay, to know that they work in solid state, liquid state or gaseous state. Okay, where are we? So, we were talking about that these things are molecular. So, I am talking about molecular second order optical nonlinearity, molecular third order second uh, uh, optical nonlinearity effect, and all that. And molecule must have these criteria 1, 2, 3 to give high molecular polarizability. Okay. So, molecular, but for uses, for practical uses, I need bulk. So, bulk is also related like this. This is quite illuminating, quite important bulk. So, bulk polarizability P is also expressed in P, little bigger P you say, you can say. So, it is chi. I had for molecular here uh, that uh, coefficient was alpha, uh, alpha, beta, gamma, delta like that. So, now it is chi 1, chi 1 e plus chi 2 e square plus chi 3 e cube plus okay all right so now the question is a common uh, common sense will tell us high beta value means so my uh, i am now interested in i am now interested in beta versus chi 2 so beta is the molecular and chi 2 is the macrocy uh, is the bulk okay so because they are all same so in a first hand we will say that high beta value means we have to make beta values high because we want chi 2 to be high and we will assume that beta value more means chi is, chi 2 is also more that is right, but not always right. A beta value large does not guarantee chi 2 to be large. Why? Beta values will be large. Okay. Beta values are large for certain molecule like say d pi a. Okay. So, d pi a, d pi a that is what I have written. So, d pi a. So, if this is positive, it becomes delta positive and become delta negative. It makes a dipole. Okay. It becomes a dipole and large dipole, so dipole. But when we have dipole, when we in molecular is all right dipole, but when you take about some uh, solid macroscopic amount, then what happened? Say dipole I express is this way, positive side, negative side. So, when I have dipole, when I get the solid, not one molecule, but lots of molecules solidified, 
then they solidify like if one is this way, the other one will be this way because they are charged. These are positive, negative. So, negative, positive. Okay. So, two dipoles will not be parallel, but anti parallel crystallization. So, they will be anti parallel. So, if there is a strong dipole for the molecule, then most of the cases it will become anti parallel crystallization, anti parallel. If it is anti parallel, then we can calculate and find that and calculation will show that chi 2 is equal to 0. So, here is a uh, uh, here is a contradiction. We want we want beta value to be high large, okay. but in certain cases if it forms a dipolar, if it is a dipolar beta values then what will happen? It will be anti parallel and if it is anti parallel calculation will show that chi 2 becomes 0. So, no good. We are not interested with beta as much as we are interested in chi 2 because we want to use this for some purpose and so for some purpose egg mole uh, one molecule cannot be useful. We want some solid, okay. some solid has lots large number of millions of molecules. So, if they are anti parallel that means my chi 2 will be 0. Okay, chi 2 will be 0. So, that is one important uh, point. Second point is, so then uh, what to do? Okay, what should we do? If they are anti parallel also, so in crystallography, say, uh, you do not know crystallography, but just take my word for it, they will crystallize in this kind of molecules will crystallize in centrosymmetric space group. Centrosymmetric, let me write little bit clearly, crystallize, I will take a new page. So, anti parallel anti parallel orientation anti parallel orientation of dipoles that you understand now we said that if it is a dipole is uh, strong it will be anti parallel this is plus this is minus this is plus this is minus so it will be like this so anti parallel orientation of dipoles they will crystallize more often than not crystallize in centrosymmetric centrosymmetric space group you probably did not understand anything i just wrote But take my word for it. So, I will tell you very in a rudimentary fashion that crystal uh, a compound can crystallize in centrosymmetric and non centrosymmetric. Okay. Centrosymmetric means they are symmetric, and non centrosymmetric means they are, non, uh, they are not symmetric. But more than that, you do not know space group, you do not know all these things. Okay. So, I leave it at that parallel, parallel orientation, parallel 
parallel orientation so parallel orientation of dipoles dipoles parallel parallel means this is po uh, this is positive this is negative and i will say this is positive this is negative so both are like this okay if the parallel then what will happen they will be crystallized in non centrosymmetric space group because they are not symmetric so non centrosymmetric space group Phase group. So, therefore, from this you can have an idea. Now, so my what should be the compounds? For example, I will tell you this is a compound, a typical compound. I am telling you just D A something like that. Now, I am showing you this is a used as a standard okay, molecular polarizability. NO2. This is donor, NH2 is donor, NO2 is a acceptor and this is a pi bridge. So, this is popularly called PNA. Okay. People using this optical nonlinearity studies, okay. so therefore, they used. All right. So, PNA is a standard. Now, the question is what I should be doing to make them anti, uh, parallel orientation, even though dipole is large, I can go from suppose a linear to higher order. Suppose I make a krypton. So, now it will be only it will be only cartoon. Okay, only cartoon. What happens? So, here this is nitrogen donor, if I can put an acceptor. This is a donor, this is an acceptor, all right, so in all cases. Okay. So, these three component, if I look at it carefully, it will looking like this. Yeah. So, we look at three. So, their crystallization in anti parallel mode will be less probable. So, people have gone from people have gone from this uh, linear to this is called octopolar. This is known as octopolar molecule or, th or a three dimensional say. So, three dimensional molecule, then it will have less probability of anti parallel crystallization. Another thing is another important fact I must tell you that if a okay. This is my dipole. Okay, this is positive. This is negative. Say, now if in this situation I keep here an optically active center, a carbon. Okay, optically active carbon here. That means my whole thing is now optically active. So optically active molecules never crystallize in centrosymmetric space group. This is another important point. So, there are many, many important points I am discussing. Here, I am saying that now I take, now I take a very large or maybe I will write like this. This is one multi, but if you have to take 
linear d Okay, and this maybe this is A, this is A, this is A. Now, if I put, I will put a single bond, double bond cannot have optically activity. Okay, so, suppose this is my chiral center, chiral molecule, okay, this is chirality. Okay. This is any group R 1, R 2, R 2 and this is maybe starting with N something. So, then there will be chiral. If a molecule has chirality, you know that it cannot crystallize in centrosymmetric space group. A molecule with chirality has to crystallize in non centrosymmetric space group. So, this is another technique. So, I will discuss this again next class. Thank you.